Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Philip Macmillan. I'm sorry I've missed you all for a few weeks almost, but I'm back again in full force, keeping you updated on the science around COVID-19, asking the hard questions, the ones that no one wants to ask, looking for answers. Just remember, from my perspective, I will look under every stone. Nothing will remain unseen from my research point of view. And that brings in this really fascinating topic about the SARS-CoV-2 virus or part of the COVID-19 virus, a patent. Where would that come from? And I can just say that the conversation that is around this, you must go and see on my Substack. And this is where you have all that information, posts, podcasts and videos since March 2020. Um, on Substack and the whole video with regards to this fascinating discussion between two professors, myself, Dr. Shetty, looking at this question yeah, has been remarkable. And this is why I'm telling you about it because you may not know this if you are not part of my Substack. So please click on the link below that will allow you to be able to watch it, but please also subscribe so you can keep updated with this kind of information. You may notice that I'm not sharing the full video. I wonder why this kind of information, some people would probably want to keep in the background. And as such, I want to make sure that it's visible in a place where you can watch it, which is on Substack. And so this is where it is um, at the moment. It's on the Substack. You can see the full video here. And it is talking about the questions uh, with Professor Balimurali Ambiati, Professor Bruce Uhall, and Dr. Shankara Shetty has the link to their published paper on this important point. So yes, uh, it's, it's really a critical discussion and one that I think everyone should be interested in. So before I go any further, I'm going to share with you the short promo of it. Believe it or not, there is a short promo of it. So take a look at this. It's about one minute and 15 seconds. And then I'll come back to share a little bit more about that furin cleavage site. In the middle of 2020, just after the pandemic had spread across the world, a scientist who was trying to understand the virus and how easily it spread, was looking carefully at the spike protein on the virus. There was an unusual pattern called a furin cleavage site that made the virus much more infective. This furin cleavage site was not part of any other human coronavirus and was certainly not a part of the original epidemic in 2003. In his search to understand exactly what it was and how it managed to be there, he stumbled on to the fact that the exact sequence of this furin cleavage site was also in a patent. Yes, the exact sequence had been patented a few years before. What would you do with that information? And yep, that's really what it's about. What would you do if you had that information? And the discussion is with the scientist who first saw it, what he did, how he thought about it, and how he approached what happened next. Really, really interesting purely even from a scientific point of view, from a personal point of view, when you come across something like this, what do you do? And so it, it's a fascinating discussion. I'd encourage everyone to look at it, reflect on it. They put in their paper ideas about how it could be there because they are not making any specific statements as to why it's there. Uh, importantly, just a reminder as to what a furin cleavage site is, and um, I'll get myself in the background here. The furin cleavage site here, um, uh, essentially, this here is the spike protein. So there's a whole of the spike protein. And right on the side here is the furin cleavage site. 
And it's not part of a normal coronavirus or human coronavirus, as I think in some other animal vectors, uh, coronaviruses, but it's right there. And this bit here is what they stumbled into with regards to a patent as to how it got there and what advantage it has is part of the discussion and something that we all need to reflect on. These are challenging times, no doubt about it. And um, what certainly we have to do is make sure that we learn lessons from all the experiences that we've had. Uh, what we have to know is that you can't make decisions or you can't be thoroughly objective without having all the facts together. So again, I encourage you, this information, even if it's just for interest, you have to listen to this conversation. Well worth your time. I'd encourage you to share that with others because, yep, we all need to learn from it. So yes, that's my, my talk for today. I'll be much more interactive over the next few weeks as I continue to share with you great ideas. And as usual, please join me on my Substack where you will get up-to-date information right as soon as it breaks. So have a great evening to everyone. Look forward to talking to you all again soon.